Hi community group leaders and teachers, I hope you all are doing well, having a fabulous day. Hey, I am excited to bring to you this week's Leadership Minute. This is one more tool that we can have in our tool belt to lead more effectively. And today, I actually want to talk about a problem that was released recently in Psychology Today. Psychologists call it Displacement Syndrome. We know it better as Zoom Fatigue. Basically, people have screen fatigue. They're tired of seeing people over, over a screen or seeing people over Zoom instead of seeing people face to face. And they don't know what to do with that. There's actually literally a disassociation that happens with people when, when they watch something over Zoom and they're, they're interacting, but they can't physically see the individual because the, the biggest source that people use to, to communicate with one another is, is nonverbal cues. Those nonverbal cues are shot when you're looking at a little teeny tiny three by five screen or smaller on your phone, or maybe you're looking at a laptop, or maybe you're looking at it even through your TV, but you're not able to see each other face to face, so you can't read the room, so to speak. It's a real problem that a lot of people are facing, not just in our church, as I'm calling around leaders in our church, I'm observing this is, this is a legitimate concern. And so I, I want to question and spend the rest of my time in this Leadership Minute by, by thinking through how can we overcome the, the legitimate concern that Zoom fatigue causes in so many people. I believe there's a couple things that we can do actually. The first thing that we can do is we can pick up the phone and make phone calls. Now I know as, as community group leaders, you've been making a lot of phone calls already. I wanna thank you for that. I wanna thank you for doing everything you have been doing to try and help people in your group feel connected. You're doing a phenomenal job. I, I wanna encourage you, that, that however long we're through this, those phone calls are making a big difference in many people, even if you're hitting voicemail after voicemail after voicemail. I can guarantee you that those voicemails are still encouraging to people. Second thing you can do is you can actually encourage people to get together in a safe and socially distant way in homes or in backyards of homes maybe even is more appropriate uh, with just small groups of two couples or three couples at a time. That way, instead of having a lot of people crammed into a little bit of space where it's you know one of the, the seven, I think the, the Tulsa County Health uh, Assessor, Oklahoma County, Oklahoma State uh, health department came up with a list of seven groups that, that would be a no-no and one of those is a home gathering of like 10 or 15 or more. If we were to do a backyard event with two or three couples where you're spaced out in a safe way, there's no ventilation because it's outside, there's a good opportunity that you can connect with each other, that you can encourage each other, you can see the body language by, by being within proximity of one another, you can also pray for each other and, and that would create some good community. Another thing you might try to do is um, encourage couples to get together, you know, one couple at a time, especially if you're in a neighborhood, maybe you can go on a walk together as a couple in the neighborhood, being out in, in nature, doing, you know, just finding ways that you can connect with people and, and people within your groups can connect with at least one other couple or, or a couple of individuals within the group will help tremendously as you're looking for ways to to bridge the gap of a lack of, of connect connectivity in our groups. The truth is, is we were designed for community. God designed us that way as he designed us in, the, in his image and likeness, in the image and likeness of a triune being who exists as a relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And we need each other now more than ever. That's why he, the author of Hebrews said in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, do not forsake the assembling one another, but continue to meet together and encourage each other all the more as the day approaches. So I want to encourage you, look for creative ways to continue to connect with each other, whether it's in a distributed community, in homes, whether it is getting together one couple at a time or a couple of friends at a time or something else. Uh, in the coming weeks, I'm going to give you some resources that, that you will be able to see and be able to utilize for, for getting just, just a couple people together at a time to walk through something where they can study the Bible together, they can pray for each other, they can encourage each other. But I encourage you, do not give up leading your group. You're making an impact. Even if you feel like there's only a couple people showing up right now, Zoom fatigue, while Zoom fatigue is real, we can help people overcome Zoom fatigue. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Hey, God bless.